Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design Now. Another year has passed, so it's time to share my favorite purchases from 2024. This is in no particular order. I'm just gonna walk around the house and pick out all the things that I've purchased this year that I've really enjoyed using. So I'll start with the Brother P-Touch 7600 label maker. I did have a manual label maker, and it was one of those where you had a dial to twist it to the letter and then use like a trigger. I think it was a dyno, a very cheap dyno one. That is okay, but if you're making a lot of labels and if you want them to look Look nice I prefer something that uses a kind of tape cassette the 7600 is quite old but these are very robust a lot of electricians use these and with anything that's used in the trades people retire and they sell their gear so you can get these very cheap I got this for 35 pound with a case instructions spare tapes and a power supply and everything. So these still work amazingly well. You can still pick up the original Brother tapes. They still sell those in a range of colors and sizes, and there are also a lot of third-party tapes you can get on Amazon for cheaper as well. I was hoping that this was gonna do heat shrink labels, because that's why I wanted it mainly for my CNC enclosure that I finished earlier this year. The 7600 doesn't actually do heat shrink labels. You need to get the E550 or newer versions and second hand those are a hundred pounds plus really what i've seen on ebay a little bit out of my price range this is really nice though uh, and i've been using it a lot for my gridfinity and my organization that i'm trying to get fixed this year as you may have seen i've been reviewing quite a few laser engravers this year i decided to pick up a pair of certified laser safety glasses i never really did like the cheap green ones that come with all of these laser engraver machines and i found that the visible light spectrum was really compromised when you have them on um, and actually i had a close call because i was working on my laptop and because it does darken the room quite a lot i did take off my my glasses the laser accidentally fired and it didn't, didn't damage my eyes or anything, but it was a close call. And after that, I thought, you know, it's not worth the risk. I invested in a pair of, these are four labs and they have a huge range of lenses that will basically block out the, the wavelength that, that you're working in. And then obviously they will let through specific wavelengths. So, I mean, there are so many different ranges that you can get. You need to make sure that you are blocking out the wavelength that you're working in. For diodes, I think it's you know, I think it's about 400, 300 to 400 nanometer, and you need to make sure it's blocking it out to a certain level. So you've got like an OD rating, and yeah, you want to make sure that you've got a very high OD rating for these. Now, thankfully, the Four Labs ones, they actually have the, the specifications actually engraved on, on the lens itself, so you can actually make sure that it is the right one. The big difference I've noticed going to a, a proper certified laser safety glasses is, is that the visible light spectrum is much, much clearer. And again, that was the reason why I took off my glasses in the first place. You know, I can have these on and I can be in this room and it does have a green tint to it, but it, it doesn't darken the room nowhere near as much as having a cheap pair. And I could, you know, work on the laptop with these on, I wouldn't have an issue. So this is the big difference that I noticed from these. They are also very nice and comfortable, and it's just peace of mind knowing that my eyes are protected. This year, I sold my old GoPro Hero 7. I never really did like it. It did have a lot of battery issues, and also it did have crashes. When you turn it on, it would just freeze, and also halfway through recording, it was very, very unreliable. We upgraded to a Pocket 3, this is DJI. I really do like this, I like the form factor of it. It's very, very nice for vlogging and for doing walking videos, which is what we use it for when we're doing our Mamiya videos on holiday. I like the flip out screen as well. Very nice and quick and easy to turn it on and off. The only issue with this is that it can shut down due to overheating. Now, if you're just doing like, you know, five to 15 minute recordings, I don't have any issues with it. If you're trying to do longer recordings, you know, like an hour plus, even in the UK, in the summertime, when I have this near the window and have it as a B camera set up for my Drift Deeper shows, after about 40, 50 minutes, it will shut down due to overheating and you won't be able to record again for about 10 minutes to let it cool down. In hotter climates, I can imagine that that is an even bigger issue. But that's when you're doing long recordings and recording it in 4K as well. The image quality though is very, very nice. Obviously it's gimbals, it's very nice and stabilized, very, very good for, for walking and doing vlogging. Sticking with DJI, I also picked up the, the mic to wireless mic. Now I do not like having this thing just sitting here and just kind of like being a walking advertisement for DJI. Um, I am probably gonna get a lavalier microphone so I can hook it up underneath my clothing. The reason that I bought this is I wanted to move to a lighter system. Previously I had a Zoom, a H4N recorder and I had a lavalier mic which had a big uh, XLR battery pack to it as well. So I had that in my pocket and it was very, very big and clunky. It would stick out. I'd often catch it on the corner of things. So I wanted to move to a wireless system. I still am probably gonna have a wire because I'm gonna have this connected to a lavalier mic, which will then be in my pocket. But this thing is absolutely tiny. It will send the wireless signal to the transmitter, which is on the camera at the moment. And so far I haven't had any issues with the wireless range of it when just obviously recording in my, in my house. 
It's very, very simple to get set up. Another benefit is that you can actually use the DJI Mic 2 with the Pocket 3. It, it will accept it as a uh, wireless mic, which is a nice feature. Also, it does have 32-bit recording internally, and you can also record at the same time to the transmitter. So that is a nice touch. I do think that the 32-bit flow, it does sound nicer compared to just running it internally into the camera. And I'm probably going to be picking up a Sankan Cos 11D lavalier microphone, which will, yeah, I think improve the sound quality of it as well. This year I picked up two of these Torque towel dispensers. The reason why I did it is that I usually just have a roll of blue roll. And when I'm like doing resin printing or I need to just clean up things, I often got dirty hands. So I often don't want to kind of use my hand to hold the roll and tear it. I really do want one handed operation. And with this, you get that. And you can get these very, very cheap because offices will just be clearing out these things. And I picked up, this was 15 pound and I got one downstairs in the kitchen as well because I really did like it. I think I got that one for like 13 pound as well. Now they do sell these things cheap because they want you to obviously buy the consumables. Now the rolls from Torque are very, very expensive. For a six pack of rolls, you're looking at about 70 to 80 pound. From Amazon, you can get blue rolls, a six pack for like 20 pound. So they, there is a huge difference in the pricing. So I've been trying to figure out a way to get around this, ways that I can use the blue rolls because they don't actually fit into this top compartment properly. And also they're perforated. So you can see if you, if you just tug this quickly, it will tear at the perforation of the blue roll, which is a little bit annoying. But what I found is, is that if you pull it slowly, it will actually cut the towel where it needs to be. It's the perforation is just strong enough. You can see there's the perforation there. It's just strong enough that you can actually cut the roll properly. But the problem is, is that the perforation will tear when you've got a massive blue roll in here. So what I do, and this is probably a bit too cumbersome for most people, but what I do is I just unroll a little bit of the big blue roll into a smaller one that is lighter and you don't have too many issues with pulling the towel and it tearing at the perforation and it tears where this machine wants it to tear. It's a bit of a workaround, but honestly, I get through a lot of these towels. I don't really want to be paying like 70, 80 pound for six rolls. It just seems ridiculous. For this current setup, you just pull it slowly. It cuts it perfectly. And I really do like one-handed operation for things like this. I picked up one of these uh, TS-101 USB soldering pens this year. This was okay for light jobs, but I did find that the USB cable it does get a little bit heavy and it does add some bulk to it. And obviously it doesn't come with a stand. I know you can probably 3D print a stand and those type of things, but I just didn't really have time to kind of, I guess, modify this to make it a decent soldering station. But I'm not gonna be using it that much anymore because I picked up one of these beasts. This is the Metcal, this is the MX500P. And I got obviously a nice pen with it. And I've also got a stand with it. This is secondhand on eBay and I got this for £125 with two of these tips. One of them did not work in the end, but yeah, I got one that does work. So I'm happy with that. This thing is a beast. This thing weighs a ton and it's definitely a step up from the kind of like the USB soldering pen that I was using. Even though, you know, they say that the TS-101, you know, it's like a fast charge up time and that kind of stuff. I do find that, yes, it charges quickly, but if you are doing a lot of soldering and if you're soldering big joints, you know, it does take a while to heat back up. With this, it will power through whatever you are soldering. And I do also love the, the wand, nice flexible cable. It doesn't get in the way. And obviously you've got a very nice stand with it. You know, I think for someone like me who doesn't really do that much electrical work, brand new, that they're like 400, 500 pound or whatever, I would, I would no way spend that on a soldering station that I probably use a few times a year. I think it's a very nice luxury that you can have for quite cheap secondhand. There are a lot of, again, like schools and uh, tech labs that are chucking out these in the dozens. I've seen people on eBay selling, you know, they've got like 10 of these units all laid up and they go for easily under, uh, under 200, but most of the time they go for under 150 pound is what I've seen while I've been watching them. Usually you will need to buy the tips. The tips are expensive. You're looking at about 15 to 30 pound for one single tip. But if you treat them well, they, they should last you a long time and there shouldn't really be too many problems with them. Uh, the only issue is, is that obviously if you need a different tip size for something, you know, you, you need to buy an entire new tip. And as I said, they're like 15 to 30 pound each. Lastly, with the electrical, because I'm standing in the corner where all my electrical stuff is, is the Omni Fixo. This is a helping hand stand, basically. You get these little kind of spring-loaded hands and they're attached by magnets, and then you can just move them around on this magnetic base. 
I was using the cheap helping hands that you've probably all seen before. I hated it, it never did a good job of holding the wires still for soldering. I ended up buying two of these, I like it that much. Not out of choice, I thought I lost this and as soon as I realised I lost it, this is how much I like this, I went and bought another one. I found this one and this is one of the main reasons why I started doing this organisation because it was in my deep drawers where things just get piled on top of one another. I did find them so I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I might do a giveaway. I want to actually do a review of it as well just to kind of show people and, and show some love for this because uh, this is just made by a, a maker and I think he might be a YouTuber, I'm not too sure. But yeah, this is a really, really nice design. This is a very unique take on the helping hands and it is definitely much better than kind of like the traditional way of doing it. The next purchase that we made this year, this was a big one. This was the Dyson, this is the V15 Detect Absolute Cordless Vacuum Cleaner. We did previously have a Mill C3 Cat and Dog Canister Vacuum Cleaner. It did an okay job. I didn't think this was gonna be as powerful. I didn't think it was gonna pick up the hair as good as a canister corded vacuum cleaner, but I've been absolutely blown away with this. It makes cleaning an enjoyable process. I love the fact that you can actually see what you're picking up. You can see the fruits of your labor every single time that you vacuum the house. If you've got any sort of pets, this is really, really good at picking up the hair. The anti-tangle head is amazing. This was a big problem for me. My partner has very long hair and as you can probably see, the cat as well, the hair would get caught up in the brush, I'd have to take it apart, I'd have to use a standing knife to cut off all the hair from the brush. This thing, you don't get any hair on it whatsoever. So the anti-tangle feature is really, really good. Overall, I'm absolutely blown away by this Dyson. It is incredible. It is so powerful, more powerful than the corded canister vacuum cleaner. And I've not had any issues with it at the moment. We've only had it for about, I think about five months so far. So it's, it's difficult to say uh, the longevity of it, but I do think this is definitely worth the hype. My parents had a, a Dyson ages ago and they weren't that happy with it. And it did seem like it, you was paying a little bit for the name really. Yeah, I do think this warrants the cost of it. The engineering and the way that this works, it really is an amazing experience for, for vacuuming. I, I do love vacuuming the house with this now. Cool did is the way to go. I find that I clean much more often now. If I just want to vac up something quickly in the kitchen, I'll find that just because it's cordless, I'll just walk into the living room and then vac that. And then if I see something on the stairs, I'll, I'll end up vacuuming the stairs. And then I might as well do the bathroom because I'm already up there. I just find myself vacuuming much, much more with a cordless setup. Is the battery last long enough to do, this is a, a two bedroom house, top and bottom. So no issues with the battery. And I really do like the, the, the green laser that comes on the other head. That is really good at picking up all of the dust on hard floors when you've got like tiles and things like that. It's not a gimmick, it, it really does do a very good job. You can see absolutely everything. So I would say Dyson V15 is definitely worth the price and definitely worth the hype. Missy, would you agree? Another cool upgrade we made to the house was we got these Ugreen 100 watt GAN chargers. These are a very nice welcome addition because what we'd have previously is we'd have like multiple plugs, like the old Samson plugs of one USB port. So we'd have like five of them for all of our charging. This has three USB-C ports and a USB-A port as well. It is much higher power. So it, it, it charges your devices much, much quicker. Highly recommend switching over to these new GAN chargers. Better heat dissipation, better efficiency. I think you can get even higher watts now. I think I've seen like 240 watts. You can charge like multiple devices. And what I really do love about these, for travel, these are really good because they basically can replace your, your laptop brick. And I've even got a an Asus gaming laptop. And the brick for that, I think is 240 watt. And it's big and it's heavy. And what you can do is you can still charge your laptops. It will charge slower uh, with one of these. But this is, this is all you need. So you can just have this for your laptop charger, for your phone chargers, for your tablet charger. So, th so these, these are so good for, for traveling. And also with it being Black Friday and Christmas very soon, uh, all of these sort of like electrical products, they, you can usually get pretty good discounts on these things. Now this year I really wanted to increase my cardio. It was something that I was really lacking. I do often go to the gym like three, four times a week. I often find that I get a little bit bored and I don't have enough time to do cardio. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to gamify it in some way, you know, something that would make it more fun for me. And this is what I ended up buying. This is the Wahoo Kicker Bike. This is the version one. Now, new, this is incredibly expensive. These are, I think, over three grand if, if you want a new one. As always, I got it secondhand on eBay. I paid, I think it was 1,200 pounds, which is still expensive 
for a bit of exercise equipment. It is a big saving compared to buying this brand new. I always find that exercise equipment is something that you can get for a good discount secondhand because people, especially after COVID, everyone wanted to do exercise in their house and then they're back to reality. You know, they can go to the gym or they just maybe give up on it and you can get exercise equipment pretty cheap. The good thing about this is, first of all, it is fully adjustable. You can adjust absolutely everything in it. I'm six foot three, my partner is, I think she's like five foot one or five foot two. So having one bike that can fit both of us was a big selling point. This can accommodate both of us, thankfully, which is a, which is a really nice thing. Also, the other thing is that you can hook it up to online cycling apps. If you've never heard of these, just type in Zwift, Z-W-I-F-T, and it is a cycling app where you can race against people online. Basically, it uses the power, the power that you generate from this bike to measure how fast you're going in the actual game. So it's really cool, it's very, very accurate. There's like competitions and all sorts of things. Now Zwift is a paid app and I do not want any more subscriptions in my life, so I'm not paying for that. There is an alternative called MyWoosh, which is completely free. And you can even win money if you uh, participate in the actual league and the races on MyWoosh, which is pretty interesting. This has changed the cardio game for me. What I really like about this is that I can do it in the morning before the gym opens, which I often find was kind of one of the reasons why I didn't do cardio. I'm up early, the gym opens at 6 a.m. and I would often find that I'd just be killing a few hours before the gym opened here, just like working or something, when I could probably get some cardio in. So that's what I do, I usually do it in the mornings. I'm someone that didn't really like to do sprints or high intensity stuff, and it's gonna sound strange, but the reason is, is that basically I was very, very paranoid of passing out from doing high intensity. I've passed that, in the past in public and, and those type of things from social anxiety. So I've got a little bit of kind of like a, a phobia of passing out basically. And I would find that I would never push myself in the gym because I was always paranoid I was, I was gonna pass out. And I, I do really think you know, that that did massively affect my my cardio fitness over like the last you know, 10 years of going to the gym of not really pushing it that much. Now I've got it here, I'm obviously much more comfortable just doing it in my own home and I can actually finally start to do some you know, uh, high intensity training. What I like about it is that you, know, you can get your hours of cardio in the week a little bit more easier because you're being distracted by racing people or playing a game or you can just have it set up so you can have like your laptop or your tablet. You can work on that, you can distract yourself and you can just get your zone two cardio in, which is really what I'm trying to up this year basically. I'm trying to get like three, four hours of zone two cardio in a week for fat burning and also for uh, improving my, my cardio fitness. If you're interested in any of that, I'd recommend taking a look at some of the podcasts that Peter Atir has done on ZO2 uh, training. It's very, very interesting. Now, obviously this is a luxury purchase, but for me, I always put my, my health as kind of the thing that I would probably invest the most amount of money in. I think things that are safety, obviously protecting my health, and obviously things that are improving my health are things where I would be happy to spend a considerable amount of money in because I, I don't think you can put a price on your health, really. I do appreciate this is a probably a very, very extravagant purchase. If you are interested in doing that kind of like gamified cardio, you can get many, many cheaper versions of this type of setup where it's a kind of like a, an indoor exercise bike. You can even get, by this brand, Wahoo, you can get a, a kicker. If you've already got a bike, you can take off the back wheel and you can attach it to it and you can use your bike and it will be basically the same thing. It will be able to track your power and you'll be able to you know, play games like My Wish and, and Zwift and those type of things. And they are much cheaper. I mean, you can get them second hand, second hand for about 300, 400. If you're interested in this type of thing, uh, I'd highly recommend taking a look at these kind of indoor exercise bikes. This is another purchase that I put off for a very, very long time. Many years ago, my hard drives corrupted on my computer and I ended up paying a thousand pounds to get all of the data recovered. I didn't learn my lesson and I did not back up my data from getting those hard drives repaired and backed up. This year, I finally made the dive of going into the world of NAS. This is the Synology, this is the 1522 Plus, and basically this is a network storage. So it isn't a backup, it is better than just having your work on a single hard drive on your computer, because you can mirror your, your data. So if one hard drive does fail, it is backed up on other hard drives here. Also, the benefit of this is that you can access your files from a central location, so if I'm working on the laptop upstairs or if I'm working on the sofa and I need to access my files, if I want to do some video editing, you can have a central location instead of 
what it was in the past, where it was just kind of all on my computer. Now, this is quite an investment. I still haven't fully invested into the system to get it working as I need it, because basically you buy the Synology disk station, but you don't get any hard drives with it. You need to fill this up with hard drives. I've got one 16 terabyte hard drive, and I need at least one more 16 terabyte hard drive, so then I've got some sort of mirroring, so I've got that data backed up onto another hard drive. I, I still need to do that with another hard drive. So with the 1522 and at least two hard drives to store all of the data that I need, and I've got a lot of data because obviously I'm a YouTuber and I have a ton of music, and obviously this is all in 4K, so you know, it takes up a lot of space. I need, yeah, two 16 terabyte hard drives, which are, they're about 250 pound each, so you're looking at 500 pound for hard drives. This was I think it was about just under 700 pound. So it is a big investment. But to be honest with you, I feel much better knowing that my data is at least backed up on another hard drive. Now this should really then be backed up offsite as well. You, you should really be doing offsite backup. What I'll probably do is I'll probably buy a big external hard drive. I will load it all up onto an external hard drive and then I'll probably leave it at my family's house. So that's what I'll probably do with an external backup. But for now, this is... I've got it working as I need it to. I just need to get another hard drive in there. I've got some smaller hard drives in there as well, which are in another kind of like volume and set up to be mirrored. So it's really nice to have kind of like a central location. You can access all of the data from wherever you are in the house. And you can even access it uh, when you're outside of the house as well. And, and basically you get something called Synology Drive. And it is essentially like your own personalized Google Drive. Here is another exercise purchase that we got this year. And again, this has been a very good investment. It is a walking treadmill that you can put underneath your desk. Now you can get these pretty cheap. This was, I think, about 100 or 150 from Amazon. It works okay. For someone my weight, I'm like 85 kilograms. My partner, she's around about 40 kilograms. It can handle both of us walking on it. She can run on it and it will be okay. As soon as I start going into a light jog, the motor is nowhere near powerful enough and it starts to, to skip on the treadmill, so we can't use this for running. And that's kind of one of the reasons why we bought the bike. We was hoping that we could maybe kill two birds with one stone. We could have a treadmill desk and then we could also maybe do some jogging and some running on it. But yeah, but there's no way, probably just a regular size adult male is gonna be able to run on, on one of these kind of walking treadmills. But it's a very good way to get your steps in. You know, you wanna be aiming for 10,000 steps a day, they say. If you get one of these set up at your desk, you know, a few hours and you, you've, you've done it, and what I find is that previously I was marching on my desk, just getting my steps in marching like this. You, you, you kind of get distracted and you end up standing still when you're working at your desk. With, with a treadmill, because it's just constantly moving, you don't need to think about walking and getting in your steps. It will kind of automatically do that for you. It helps to distract you from, from doing it, which with any sort of cardio, that's, that's what I really, really like. I finally bit the bullet this year and I bought a pair of Mitsutoyo calipers. These are the Absolute AOS Digimatic ones. I was putting up with a cheap pair of Amazon calipers for many, many years, but so many times I would take a measurement of something, I would model it, I would 3D print it, and then I would come to try and get it to fit the part that I'm trying to make it fit to, and uh, it just wouldn't fit. And then I'd actually measure it again, and I'd realize that my calipers did not zero properly, or they were off by a few millimeters, and it was so annoying. So I decided to just get a pair of these. Obviously, as you would expect, they are amazing. I got them on Amazon. You've got to be careful for fakes. Um, but I got them for £120, I think. Uh, yeah, j j just a completely different level, obviously, to what you'd expect from a, from a £20 pair. What I really do like about them is that no matter where you put them, obviously, they are absolute position. So if it's just pulled down there and if you turn it on, it will know exactly where it is. It's now 62.43 millimetres and it is absolutely spot on. The only thing I don't like about these and I'm really surprised is that they don't have an auto off. You have to turn them on and off. Now everyone tells me that the batteries last for a year when they do just leave them on all the time, but to me it just seems like a waste of a battery. Why not just have an auto off feature? So that was probably my only surprise with these that I didn't really like. Um, apart from that though, yeah, they're very, very good. Another thing that I've really enjoyed using and I built an undermount desk for it is my Space Mouse. This is the 3D connection. This is the Bluetooth version, the wireless version. But they did send this to me for free in exchange for a shout out. And I will continue to show it out because I really do like this. It makes using Fusion 
much more enjoyable and once you get used to controlling the camera movements with this going back does really feel clunky when i was first researching about this and i was reading all their marketing materials and it was saying like you know it's like a few seconds faster each time i was thinking really like i'm pretty quick with my with my mouse click and move and then moving the mouse and doing things when you switch over to the space mouse you don't notice the time saving and i was kind of like Using it, I was thinking, okay, yeah, it's it's more intuitive. Like, it's cooler that you can kind of, like, zoom and move around and all that. But I don't really think that I'm being much quicker with it. But you, you notice the speed when you switch back to using a mouse and keyboard. This is definitely quicker. And it's only just, like, a few milliseconds per movement. But if you are working in this day in, day out, they will obviously compound and probably save you a lot of time on your projects. Once you get used to the movement, pulling it and zooming it, and obviously setting up your macros, and it's really cool with a 3D connection software, you can set up your own custom radial menus that you can access via, via these hotkeys. Yeah, it's a lot of like muscle memory to, to learn. It's something completely new that most people have probably never used before, and therefore I think that the learning curve is gonna be a bit steeper to maybe other kind of like computer accessories but once you do get your head around it they are very nice and also they work in other like 3d software as well like you can you can use it in, in like blender as well so it's not just like for cad design it's not just for fusion and things like that sticking at my desk i got a few extra things as well i upgraded my headphones this year i was using a wired pair and they were the audio technica the m40s they were okay i wanted wireless so i want to try and switch everything to wireless because i just hate wires the audis maxwell are probably the best closed back wireless headphones that you can probably get in this price range there are obviously the the airpod maxes and my girlfriend did actually try those recently. I think the sound quality is better on the Audis Maxwell. When you are using that noise cancellation, they are obviously really, really good. Uh, these do not have active noise cancellation, but I do find that the passive noise cancellation on these is very, very good. I can have my partner sitting next to me on a meeting, having a call. If I've got music on with these, it's really not too much of an issue. The sound quality though is, is really, really good. They do punch well above their weight in terms of sound quality for the price. The only other ones that I was looking at were the, I think it was the, is it Aeon 2s? I can't remember the name, not Dave Smith, something else. But they are like, they're like a thousand pound. And then there are the Focal, the, is it the Bathys, I think? And they're about 600, 700. They are wireless closed back. So for wireless closed back, there's not that many options, but I think for sub 300, these are definitely the best. They do come with a headset because they are really designed for gaming, but the microphone is, is really good for calls. I mean, I often have these on when I'm speaking to my partner. And just today I was vacuuming the floor and I was speaking to her and I said like, can you hear the vacuum in the background? And she says like, no, I can, I can only hear your voice and it's really clear. So they do have noise cancellation on the microphone and it is very, very good. If that is a feature that you need for like making calls and those type of things. I did have some issues with the comfort of these at the beginning. I did switch to the Wicked Cushions ear cups and they do, they do make it quite big. As you can see, they, they do stick out quite a lot, but you do get a little bit more space between your ear and the, uh, the ear cups here. The only complaint that I have with these, and I could see how these could be a deal breaker for some people. And I'm really surprised that it hasn't been mentioned too much is that when you do have them on for a long time, the ventilation is not very good and you can start to hear what sounds like water trickling or, or, or little water drops. And supposedly it is the condensation building up on these drivers because they are just very, very thin bits of metal, I think. All these are aware of this and their people have complained and they said, yep, I mean, that is just part of it. You just need to take them off and let it evaporate. But that to me seems like quite a big technical issue because as people say, if sweat is building up on that and salts get deposited, that, you know, that could deteriorate things. And I have noticed it quite a lot. I mean, I just like having these on because they do dampen the noise, especially if my partner's working next to me during the day, I like to just have these on and you, you can hear that noise building up. If you've got music on, then you can't ever hear it, but if there are like pauses in the music, you can hear this very faint, like trickling noise. It's, it's very, very faint, it's hard to explain. Like during the winter time, you don't get it as much, but during the summertime, you know, you can hear it a bit more. I don't have too many issues actually with sweating in these. I thought I would because yeah, they're closed back and I did have an issue with the audio technical ones, the M40s. In the, in the summertime, I had to switch to an open back pair because they were just too hot. 
But these, the, the wicked cushions, they do a very good job of cooling. Even with that technical issue, like just the sound quality, I think they're still worth it for the price range. I got these for £260 refurbished from Aldi's website. And I remember when I first put them on, I just listened to like a, a few, few of my tracks and I was, my, the hair was just standing up on my arms because it was just like the, the clarity and the sound stage of these is, is very, very good. The other thing I don't really like is, is the controls at the bottom of the ear cups. The AirPod Maxes where they have the controls at the top makes so much more sense. I, I never use these controls here, which is a little bit annoying because I do like to kind of like skip and pause and, and you know turn the volume up and down and things like that, but I just haven't really built up the muscle memory to remember what ones are what here. Another purchase that I got this year was the Elgato, I got the Stream Deck, the XL version. This is something I've been meaning to buy for many, many years because I know that it would really help me with productivity. And this year I did it and I'm really glad that I did. It is very good for productivity. The things that you can do on it are so cool the macros that you can build with like auto hotkey and also the apps and the plugins that are kind of available on the marketplace as well. If you work in software a lot, if you use programs, you know, Adobe or 3D design or whatever, get one of these because once you learn it, you know, they will really help with productivity. I have zero coding knowledge, but with ChatGPT and Claude, I can pretty much write any auto hotkey script that I need and I've created a lot of them. That really does open up the possibilities for non-coders like me. We recently went on a Tokyo trip which I talked about and you can see some of the shows that we did. We recorded some DJ shows while we was in Tokyo on my other channel Drift Deeper. I'll put some links in the description. But I wanted a, a tech pouch. Basically I obviously carry a lot of tech with me when I go on holiday because you know, I do things like recording shows. I obviously do like vlogs with the camera and all that type of stuff and I I usually work because I'm self-employed. I work on holiday basically. So I need to take all of my kind of like camera and all of my audio gear with me. Usually I'd have it all bundled in kind of like the, the top pocket of my bag and it's just always a mess. So this year I, in an attempt to get more organized in my life, I bought a tech pouch. I was actually not expecting much from this. This is the inner tech pouch. I really like it because it kind of opens up like this and then you can access all of your things. I had this fully loaded out for Tokyo. I had so many things in here and I was really surprised how much you could fit in here. And it really does keep it organized. I like it so much that I'm actually gonna just keep it on my desk as an, as an organizer because the, the cable organization like with these little Velcro straps and the elastic bands, it's, it's really, really nice. So what I'm planning to do is basically just kind of like migrate everything into this bag and then I can just have like one bag for everything. This is mainly for my Drift Deeper shows, but this year I bought the Godox. This is the LD150. This is a RGB CCT LED panel. And these were for some reason going really, really cheap on Amazon earlier in the year. I picked up actually two of these panels. Retail in normal stores, they it was listed at 700 to 800 pounds. And it is a really, really feature rich LED panel. For some reason on Amazon, they were going for, I think about 330 pound. And I picked up two of them. And what I love about it is that, you know, it's controlled on your phone. So I can just kind of turn this on and off on my phone. You know, you can just like, change the colors, you've got color filters, you've got RGB, HSI, C CCT, you can kind of like add tints, magen magenta and green to make sure you get your color balances right. I mean, it, it allows you to customize absolutely everything. And obviously it is a very, very powerful light, 150 watt is more enough to flood this entire room, which is what I use it for when I do the Drift Deeper shows. I'm not sure if they're on sale anymore. I'm not sure if Godox actually making them anymore. I'm guessing they were probably reduced in price to get rid of maybe some of the last stock. The only issue that I've got with it is that you do get a little bit of a whine. I'm guessing it's probably from the capacitors in, in like the PCB that's on the light. The one upstairs, it does whine a little bit after it's been on for quite a while. Apart from that though, just for kind of like a, a colored light to fill a room or to add a little bit of a splash of color to video, Really, really nice lights. Now this would definitely not apply to everyone, but if there are any music makers watching this and you have an iPad, then you probably know about the huge ecosystem of music apps that are out there. I've been trying to get more into music production and to learn it over the last few years. The first thing that I got was a Digitact and I liked that, but it didn't have any sort of kind of sound making capability. Well, it does, but it doesn't have any sort of synth engines like that. And I, I really do like playing around with synths. I would really love a hardware synth, but I don't really have the time or space to get into it. This year I got a, an iPad for travel and work. 
And it also meant that I could finally jump into the ecosystem of music apps for iPad. And I really do love the iPad for music making. I think it is probably the best device for music making purely because there are just so many options out there and it's very, very cheap. What you'll find with desktop uh, doors or digital audio workstations is that the uh, the cost for the software is, is very, very expensive. I think Ableton is over 500 pound. I mean, you can get a monthly subscription to Logic Pro for iPad, which is really, really good for like five pound per month. But the app that I just want to talk about very, very quickly is Drambo. This is kind of like the Electron workflow where you've got parameter locks. You can parameter lock pretty much anything, but also it's a complete modular environment. You can go into your tracks and you can add all sorts of things. You can also add other audio units. You can add like third party, like for instance, I've got the Event Tired reverb pedal here. I've got the Xeon Synth, I've got Scalar 2, which is a, an app for chords. So you can bring all of these apps into Drambo to coordinate with each other. So there's so much you can do in this, and this is exactly what I wanted. This is basically the Electron Digitact kind of style of making music on steroids. And yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with this. For music apps, Black Friday is probably one of the only categories of items where Black Friday is actually a good deal. Usually it's just a bit of a marketing scam, but with Black Friday of music apps on iOS, everything is discounted and discounted quite heavily. You can get Drambo, I think for about 14 pound, is usually 20 pound. I got all of the event tired reverb plugins. I think they were like half price, like 50% off. So yeah, you can get really good deals at the moment for the Black Friday week. This Diamondback tool belt was very helpful while I was building my shed. I got halfway through the shed build and I realized that, yeah, I, I needed something with more pockets, I needed to be able to hold things. And then I come across the world of tool belts and I managed to find a Diamondback tool belt. This is the Mazo. And I've also got the, this is the Eagle. I got this second hand. I got the, the belt. I can't remember how much I paid for it. I think it was around about 300. I bought the hammer holster myself, which is a very nice addition. And just overall, yeah, it's a really nice belt. I mean, Diamondback, as you probably know, they make some of the best belts and you can have so much on you and you can have it on all day and it really does help to distribute the weight. And I just find that, yeah, you just you just work so much quicker and so much more effectively with this kind of setup. And I find that I just use this when I'm just doing DIY around the house, even like this weekend, I put up some shelves and I just stuck this on. And there was just like so many times where you just like, you need something, you put it in your pocket. Usually I'll just be doing it with like maybe a pair of work overalls on with a few pockets. It's comfortable, but it's this setup with a tool belt is just so much more comfortable. It distributes it to the shoulders, which just makes heavier loads, much more comfortable. These things are built like tanks and it will probably last you a lifetime. The only issue that I have is that when you are reaching up a lot, because this, maybe it's because this one hasn't broken in, this didn't actually get much use when I bought it second hand, but I do find that this braid in here, um, it does, it can like cut into your neck and it can rub. I do find that I maybe have to put on like a, a schnud or a scarf because if I'm doing a lot of seeding stuff, if I'm constantly doing that, then it will, it maybe just needs to like break down a little bit and be a bit more softer because it is, it's still a little bit si uh, stiff. But yeah, I did, I did uh, get a red saw mark here while I was doing a lot of stuff, hammering overhead with my left hand and I did notice I was getting a little bit of a rash here. I probably just got sensitive skin, but yeah, I really do love these, uh, these tool belts and there are many, many options available out there. I think I might actually buy another one actually that's kind of more designed for everyday carry because that is something that I find that I need much more actually now. I and mean, I'm thinking of getting maybe some sort of leather man or something. I just literally need something with pliers, knife, and a screwdriver. And that's what I always find that I need when I'm kind of working on projects. I think you probably can get one like that for a, for a belt. I'm not sure if I need to be wearing a belt all day though. I think maybe a leather man would probably do the job. So that might probably be my final purchase. Maybe over Christmas, I'll buy something like that. So that is it. Those are the purchases that I've enjoyed the most. But I hope you found a few things that you could maybe add to someone's Christmas list or your own Christmas list. I'll put links in the description to all of these things that I've mentioned. Where I can, they will be affiliate links. I will get some sort of commission if you buy it. I also put the text description of it as well. So you can just copy and paste it and search it in Chrome. If you don't want to go through my affiliate link, that's not a problem. I hope everyone has a good Thanksgiving and Christmas. There'll probably be more videos from me uh, before Christmas and New Year. I've got a few more planned. I may not get it uploaded before some of the holidays start. 
Anyway, that is it for today. Catch you all later.